In our constant grind culture that encourages zero work-life balance, artists like me find ourselves in this really counterproductive mode to, quote, always be on. I'm a sucker for the kind of motivational speakers like David Goggins, Les Brown, and Gary Vee that encourage you to seize the day and work like there's no tomorrow and literally never sleep in some cases. That kind of motivation is helpful with things like studying for college finals, getting your fitness together, and starting a business. But really, how applicable is that to art? We know Michelangelo worked tirelessly, but not to an uninspired march forward into infinity. But the dirty little secret for us artists is that motivation and inspiration are not the same thing. We all take breaks. Sometimes a break from art starts for a day, then goes on for a week or a month, and sometimes longer. Before you know it, you haven't worked on anything art-related in two or three months, and now you have two problems. The first problem is shaking off the rust and letting your muscle memory get back to technically where you used to be before you took the break. And not to minimize it, but that's a motivation problem. Frankly, there's a lot of motivational help out there on the internet maybe even too much. We also know that this stuff is like riding a bike, so you never really forget how for long. The second problem, and the one that gives me anxiety about beginning again, is the crushing weight of my guilt for having seemingly abandoned my passion projects for so long. Almost like I owe my intended creations a promise to have made them real by now and I've let them down. For artists, our work is so meaningful to us and is such a vulnerable part of us that it really can play to our worst feelings when we take time away from them. I'm working through this right now. Take a look at how long it's been since I've made a YouTube video, for instance. I'm starting to believe that artists in particular need a different way to look at breaks and at ourselves. I think about it like this. Motivation is defined as that general desire or willingness of someone to do something. I consider motivation to be your drive to make your hand draw, your fingers sculpt, and sit down to begin needling away at the art you make. Even now as I say these words, what is motivating me is probably the hope that you'll hear it, and what I've thought about alone for all these hours will be helpful to you. But as an artist, I've come to feel that motivation is the engine not the fuel propelling the work. Inspiration is a little trickier and just different enough to start to be able to make sense of all this. Inspiration is defined as the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. Bingo. That's the fuel for the motivation engine. And that's why the motivation gap between, say, a football player and an artist even exists in the first place. Motivation alone will help you to do art exercises or work on techniques like your anatomy, composition, color theory, etc. Just like the football player, you can run drills all day long getting technically better with practice and motivation will drive you to do it. But athletes don't play to run through cones and artists don't create just to shade well on our homework. For us, Game day is having the inspiration to bring forth a drawing or sculpture that has only ever existed in our minds into reality. That's a very heavy lift, one that requires research, imagination, bouncing ideas off of friends and loved ones, being exposed to great art in museums and in real life, and actually living a full life. But man, that sounds like a lot of wasteful procrastination, frankly. That's why even though inspiration and motivation need one another, they also repel like magnets in my view. When I sit down and ignore video games that I want to play, friends that I want to see, movies I want to go watch, or forgo a date night with my significant other to crank out the piece I'm motivated to finish, my inspiration tank is slowly depleting. Most of the time, I don't notice this happening because I'm so proud to be living up to the grind culture expectation that I'm crushing it the way society has groomed me to. And that can last for a day or a month or a year even. But at the end of it, what do all artists talk about at the end of a period like that? We all end up saying we're burnt out. I've had so many conversations between periods 
of producing many uh, pieces of art where me and a friend are talking about how we're burnt out. Well, now we get to feel like crap because we've lost touch of why we were excited to begin with. And now we're also the villain in our own art journey for booting up Overwatch and going out to see the latest Marvel movie. But you know, just then as I'm sitting there checking out the latest version of how they nerfed D.Va, or loving every minute of seeing Tobey Maguire come back to play Spider-Man, I notice my inspiration tank is filling up. It's making me think about mechas I want to sculpt, or how much I want to revisit a Batman sculpture I did way back in 2012. Suddenly, I'm out on a date with my girlfriend and I'm talking a mile a minute about how I'm planning to conceptualize and execute a painting I thought about for an art show next fall. I couldn't do the large scale and fully inspired pieces that I'm so proud of if I didn't sit down to binge watch all of The Mandalorian. I needed to have hundreds of hours of childhood memories of the 90s X-Men to express myself by sculpting a dozen of the characters and 3D printing them and painting them and displaying them. My point is that even though the tortured artist in me and in all of us wants so desperately to beat ourselves up for not just living in our studios cranking out hundreds of pieces without delay, that can only happen with a healthy number of breaks and living life to want to do it again anyway. I had a friend who started down the art path many years before I did, and every summer he would complain about something I couldn't understand that he used to call his drawing depression. No matter what he did, the call of summer blockbuster movies, good books, cool video games and hanging out would prevent him from noodling away at his art practice. When he would force himself to sit down to actually draw, he wouldn't be able to make anything happen, or at least anything good. For some unknown reason to him and to me back then, the magic would be gone until September would roll around when school started again. You know, over a decade later, I'm wondering how we didn't see how a 16-year-old boy had no interest in isolating himself with art in his bedroom when the inspiration at that time was going to come from all that life had to offer during summer break. It's not a drawing depression. And there's nothing wrong with you or me having a life. For me, this past fall and winter had me working on my art in peaks and valleys. I found time where I was really motivated and time where I wanted to do anything but. I had a lot going on in my life, including the pandemic worsening again here in New York City during the Omicron surge. But also in December, my sister got married, so my whole family and I were busy making some happy memories right before the holidays. And of course, the holidays happened. Just now again, I'm working on several projects and making videos on this channel since I've had that inspiration again. But I never stopped being a sculptor, a designer, and an artist when I'm not working. It's always a part of me, as I'm sure it is for you. I'm taking those experiences in at the time and letting them attract me back to my clay and my 3D printer when the call is strong enough to answer. I'm almost sorry to say that the answer is something that can seem a little empty like acceptance, but let me put it in words that an overachieving workaholic like me can understand and maybe you'll believe. When you reflect on all you've lived and experienced in your long breaks away from art, where have you been? What games have you played? What shows or movies have you seen? And what have you read? Probably most importantly, who have you spent time with? Those memories are right now what's inspiring you to go back to making great art. It's probably why you clicked on this video. That especially includes the sad or bad experiences. What brought us to the studio right now is what literally brought us to the studio again. And I want to repeat that. What brought us to the studio right now is what literally brought us to the studio again. If you're sitting down to work, that's all you need. If you aren't, take a minute to think about what you're doing with your free time now and how it's going to influence your work when you are ready. For me, I'm going to focus more on employing the patience I give myself in learning how to sculpt to allow myself time to be inspired for my craft. Thanks for listening, and until next time.